Welcome to Superhuman Training Program. Playfully embodying the new spiritual renaissance. I'm Melissa O'Ryan. And I'm Colby Collins. And this week's episode, we are examining the new leaders. How can we be leaders of our own lives and create a non-hierarchical world? Community. Oh, yes. Come, unity. Come. <laughs> Commune. <laughs> Wow, this is going to be a fun episode, and let's start with some check-ins. Colby, how are you doing? I'm doing really wonderful. Um, so many rapid changes happening mm -hmm. in life, and um, I title a lot of my work Awakening Accelerator mm -hmm. uh, programs, and, and I've really been experiencing that in my own life very much, and preparing to uh, go on the spiritual odyssey adventure yes. to Southeast Asia and India. That's happening in September uh, now. And um, I'm in love. Mm -hmm. I've got a new, new love uh, in my life that uh, is deeply fulfilling mm. already. So that's been something I've been breathing into. And just the reflection that partnership can actually bring when you're <laughs> devoted to, when both people are really devoted to self inquiry practice mm -hmm. and of being sovereign, but also creating a synergy together mm -hmm. in support realm of co-creation and support absolutely um, so yeah it's still really new and um, brand new and all of that but also it feels very ancient and old and mm -hmm. like we're picking up where we left off you know eons ago beautiful perhaps. so uh, yes and in the topic of this week I really am excited about talking about the new leader because I've been examining that in my self and so many years of being hesitant or afraid of the gifts that I've been given to share, to serve in the awakening, um, and my own awakening and in other people's awakening, whomever is, feels called to be guided with the messages that have been given through me and through this vessel of, of, of my personality, and what it really means to be the leader, uh, to be a leader, uh, and when I would look at our political system and even the way in school and the way authority is expressed mm -hmm. and that it's um, you know I tell you what to do and you do it and you don't think for yourself and you don't ask even when I was in church when mm -hmm. I was young and I was asking all these questions who told you to ask that you know like you're not no no we tell you how to think mm -hmm. you think you do that's it and or you're a Democrat you're a Republican this is what it means to be that and you know you have to do it or this is what it means to be a Christian and that we are almost glamorized that leadership style of an authoritative leader, even in um, ancient spiritual traditions of like the guru consciousness of like, right, you don't question um, anything that comes. So it's like this healthy sense of skepticism, but also it's more about, to me, a new leader inspires people into this independent thinking and inspires them into an awakening of they're their own guru within. They, we have this hardware that can be the software that can be updated so that we can receive our own spiritual guidance and that to be mm -hmm. a leader in that to be a spiritual guide that I'm claiming my intention is not for it to be about the glory of this personality or the glory of some big business or uh, having all these followers that do exactly what I say right it's right. about instead of not handing out fish and having the followers be dependent on mm -hmm. the fishermen, but to hand out fishing poles mm -hmm. and to lead them to the water right. and say, you got it. Right. right. And so uh, I've really been contemplating that a lot as tomorrow I am uh, filming my first Awakening Accelerator Yay. online course. So exciting. And, uh, awakening in that. So um, this is a really perfect time to be having this conversation and, and breathing into these vibrations. So. Fabulous. Yeah. Good check. Good check in. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, I also have just been deep in inquiry the last little bit coming back from New York um, and the vibration of chaos into a place that feels super grounded. We're here at my home right now and we're sitting out in this beautiful pasture right next to my favorite mountain that I grew up next to, Mount Hood. We have horses around us right now and the sound mm. of birds and it's just absolutely blissful for me to be in this space feeling really grounded. Um, I found that this last week has been around communing with myself being in service to a common goal and realizing that 
I have particular codes and tools that can aid in a, a synergy with the, the person that I'm living with and with, with his projects and with you and your projects and recognizing that they're all really the same thing and that if we play our own particular part in that orchestra, then we create this very harmonious field. And that's been my work this last week is just really examining what are the tools that I have that are unique to me that can aid in this inner dependence that we have and create synergy and and like what we read today in the Gene Keys that we will be talking about a little yeah, bit I'm today. Yeah, so glad. Um, uh, synarchy, the word synarchy is, yes. is such a, a potent word and and um, heterarchy, heterarchy instead of hierarchy. And yeah. so we'll, we'll examine a little bit of that, but that's been a lot of my inquiry as of late has been how can I vibrate at my highest frequency knowing that my gifts work in synergy with others and that we create this beautiful tapestry orchestra of sound. So I am really grateful to be uh, held in this home right now, held in my community and feel like my gifts are being in service. Um, so I'm excited about today's topic Hello, because I do feel like that's a lot of what we aim to do with this. And um, I just want to speak to uh, one of the things that Colby was telling me before we pushed record today was that he's been receiving some really great feedback about our uh, podcasts and that um, one fan in particular has has voiced that she is so grateful that when she's done listening to us, she feels uplifted and she feels inspired and has tools versus some of the other podcasts that she's listened to. She gets a lot of tools but doesn't feel empowered by them and feels a little drained in the process of of listening and so I'm not in a comparative way I don't I don't mean to compare us to others but what I got from that was yay we're doing what we yeah. set out to do yeah. was to just vibrate that pulse of inspiration that like you said gives people their own fishing pole and really helps them remember that they already have it right. and that they do have the tools to go out and, and catch their yeah, own dreams. And that dreams. we can speak about very meaningful, deep, and, and often shadowed elements of mm -hmm. our own perception of who we are and the world at large in a way that conceptualizes it, con contextualizes it in this process of unfolding or awakening to mm -hmm. A new paradigm of living right? in a playful way, and, that's, what we're and that's and that's yeah. what we intend to do is keep it keep the the pulse of we've got this, yeah. and this is just one avenue for for remembering that we've got this, mm -hmm. and this is not the only avenue. Of course, we're absolutely not saying that we hold anything unique uh, that everyone has. Right. This inside of them. So, yay! We're, and I, we're I really love how that kind there. of segues into. Thank you for that check in. It's so beautiful. Thank you. As you always are. Oh, sure. Darling, darling. Love your hoop and ring. Love the bag. Love the shoe. Love everything. <laughs> <laughs> the, there's this, a beautiful segue there for me about when you were saying that, you know, we all already have the fishing pole, right? And so probably it's not even about handing out the fishing pole. It's about, look in the knapsack, look what you got, you know, yeah. you're just carrying around, you you, right? Look what you came with. <clears throat> and my, my question that arose in me, what I noticed was, well, why are we not, why are most people not in that awareness of the tools that are actually available to them or the resources that are available to them to be a conscious creator and everything that we've been talking about in all these different ways. And in my perception, one thing that I notice is that we are trained, even as, as small children, to look to the authority figure, to look to the teacher, right? And in some, in some ways that's necessary, right? But before we come into full awareness of, of everything. But the model of it, of where the masses seem almost eager to have someone else give them the answer. You know, I remember when I was doing psychic readings um, before my work evolved in more of a coaching place. You know, as people wanting to say, well, you're the psychic. I want you to, here's here's the problem. I want you to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell me the answer. And I remember mm -hmm. always just saying so much, like, 
I can help you understand your circumstances, how you got to this place, what the moving parts are, empower you to know what your resources are, help you be more informed about the choices you have to make. Right. But I can't tell you what to do. Right. I can't tell that you how to live your you. life. I can't tell you, you know, what to do in your relationship or whatever it is, right? I can just help you understand things better. But the people, so many people would be so angry, frustrated, well, you know, and think that, you know, psychics are, like, all-powerful, that they can just, like, right. you know, know everything They're coming about from everything. a very disempowered place. Yeah, though. I mean, I looked, like, even, you know, in, you know, back 2016 in the, in the political election season and all of that, and just how eager the masses are to, oh, this person in power said this must be true. Right? Mm -hmm. Or that, that thing, it must be true then. And then uh, people just want to rally behind this instead of pausing for a moment to actually have the cognition, mm -hmm. you know, the deduction skills of like, well, that doesn't feel right. aligned. Why right. not? What, what are the actual facts? And that we live in this information age where if there's pretty much anything you want to find out, you just do some Google, you know, a couple hours of research and you've got all the information that you can need. But people don't want to do that. And even in the context of spirituality and religion, you know, they flock to the spiritual leaders and saying, you've got my answer, and now I'm just kind of blindly follow you. I'm going to put you on this pedestal. I'm going to make you un right. unhuman or inhuman. And then as soon as you make a human, quote, unquote, mistake, then mm -hmm. now everything that you've shown me is, is abolished. Like void. And then I'm suddenly so lost, and it reminds me of um, when I was going to church when I was young, the Baptist church. And um, this one day, the, you know, the, the, the pastor got up and said, you know, I must resign as, you know, as your pastor. I've committed adultery. And, of course, everyone knew it was a small town. He knew that, you know, he'd been having an affair with, you know, a, a, a young lady in the congregation. And, um, but that it was so secret, and they, they tried to hide it, and it's everything. And the people were, so many people were disillusioned, or it's like, why is your faith in God you know, dependent, dependent on this, on this man, <laughs> yeah, this man in in his stuff, you know, in his personal life, right? And it's not to d dismiss any of those things of like, you know, he was establishing himself as a leader in the church to follow the values to the letter. But maybe therein lies our problem, you know, that we're so, uh, you know, as a culture, perhaps, in a society, disowning or resisting our own. nurturing values doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to grow up and be this kind of person. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love it. It's like we're back to the, the parenting episode that we talked about, being stewards. And to me, mm -hmm. that's what the new leader is all about. It, it resonates with the humility. You know, like the, the, the crown is heavy or with great power comes great responsibility, you know, like the Spider-Man um, adage. <laughs> and to me, that responsibility means that you, the true leaders, know that they are of service. So it can't be about you know, even if they are this like star personality, right? But if the energy is always coming through them and being handed right back, you know, the reflection, mm -hmm. the adoration that's coming, it's going right back. You know, you, I, I've said that a few times in my reading, readings, and people are just like, "Oh my God, you're so amazing!" I'm like, the fact that you can conceive and perceive this in me means that you've already accessed it in yourself, or you wouldn't right. be able to notice it in me, right? right? So it turns it right back the around. The mirror. And like own that, own that mirror. Mm -hmm. And that new leader has got that humility and that. Humility is embracing one's power as a responsibility to serve. I've been given this power to provide mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. And that's different than I've been given this power, now everyone serve me. Right. right. And to me, right. even though those words right there kind of illustrates it perfectly. Old leader, I fight my way to the top, I work my way up the ladder, I squash, I, I bend, I cheat, and whatever I got to do, I get up, and now I'm the top dog, everyone bow to me. Right. I'm better than you, I'm better than you, I'm better than you, right. business competition, versus this other 
leadership style perhaps that we're exploring here. Right. It's like I've given this great power to awaken everyone else that they have the power to. And then it's like this the synergy model or the what is it? Heterarchy. Heterarchy, yeah, heterarchy. It sounds like heterosexual. Huh? <laughs> um, <laughs> the heterarchy where it's, you know, maybe there is one person in an executive position, but then all the integral parts, but they're all functioning like an executive yes. together. Yes, yeah. well, they've been empowered to be their particular part and their role. And one of the things that we talked about leading up to this was the, the way that these pod minds like the dolphin or the way the hive mind of the bee functions where each part is necessary in the whole and that there is a common brain that is functioning between all and recognizing then that the hierarchical systems function in a vertical way where you are only able to do what you are meant to do if someone above you gives you, gives permission. you permission to do yes. that versus the hierarchy that we'll read a little bit about in the Gene Keys is around horizontal uh, governance where we are able to embody our own particular role and even be a part of a team inside of something that functions on its own knowing that it's a part of the whole and has this feedback loops and the feedback mechanism. So true democracy would be that exactly. where we're okay. all right. we're all having a vote and we're all representing our own particular vantage point inside of it, knowing that I don't actually know about farming. So I'm not going to be the one that makes the decisions in that realm and yet I know a lot about the things I know about and maybe the farmers don't and so they're able to be functioning in their own part when, of when. the whole and we all we all create one one mind one one functioning system so um, I really like that the word leader is is so interesting because it's it's acting in in a in the old system like I am the tender of the sheep and they are and they are lead I am leading them versus recognizing that I am leading myself mm -hmm. and that by listening and, and following what we've talked about before about truly being in that place of resonance with our own truth and knowing how to speak that and knowing how to move from that from what we talked about as um, empowering our young selves, listening to our inner child, like we would asking questions and listening to the, the youth, that this creates a completely different form of, of feedback. And the way that, that I just keep feeling like um, I see this double toroid all the time. I, I see things as sphere. And so what we put out comes right back to us. And so the, the questions that we ask come back as answers. And so when we're asking ourselves as the leader what is the truth of my moment and what's the truth of my destiny and the truth of my power that comes back to us as reflections from all around us versus waiting for someone or a group of people to tell us what right. to do and so there's a there's an interdependence versus an independence and there's a synergy versus this competitive <coughs> reality um, so there's right. a lot of um, great examples out there now but there's um, there's not really a universal um, system that's being in place or that we can see that is shifting this there's still a lot of resistance and friction with the leadership quote unquote yeah. that is in our governments and in our well I'm our just really thinking societies. about as I'm listening to you talk I'm like what is the example that's even in my mind and I, you know, mentioned it before, like the original Greek Senate democracy in, in, mm -hmm. in ancient Greece mm -hmm. uh, and even ancient Rome, that they had a true republic where, I mean, of course, at that time, like the slaves and all kinds of different things, but that the, the people of society were empowered enough to think, you know, that's, that's leadership first is to be, a, what does it mean to be your own leader in your for your own self and in your own body and to me that harkens to this notion of being an independent thinker that I can take in all this information that I can take in all these ideas and beliefs and everything I can uh, analyze the data of it I can see what seems to be evidence of supporting and what seems uh, seems not and to also 
be accessing a state of mind that's beyond what anyone else has ever thought of before. And so it's like taking in all that evidence and saying, yes, but some of the evidence is missing. doesn't mean the evidence isn't there. It's just mean that it's missing in this. And so can I access that in another way? And the independent thinking really banks on our ability to tune in to what we mm. feel, what our body's feeling. Yeah, you know, independent that, feeling. Independent feeling. We get so, they get so glossed over that we're not even realizing that that thought is toxic. Sounds good. And so a lot of people are saying it. A lot of people believe it, but it feels icky. You know, mm -hmm. why? And to me, those are the, that's the impetus of new ideas or independent thinking. And so to me, in order to truly lead your own life, you must be thinking about yourself and perceiving the world in your own unique way, but that is also connected to what's beyond separation. And I think that's what, you know, people don't want to do. You know, it's a, it's a expression of our resistance to be like, in order for us, in order for me to be empowered to realize who I am, what my resources are, what my gifts are, what's mine been given mine to do, and how that fits into its greater mosaic of a human family, I've got to face a lot of pain, you know, and a lot of resistance of like, it's so much easier to be a victim or be fighting back or to complain or to mm -hmm. be like, if I had that, I would, but I don't, or right. if I could do it, I would, or I right. can't afford that. Or Apathy. So many people, it's very so easy. crazy to me. So many people <laughs> have been talking about my trip. How do you have means to travel? You know, I'm like, well, I'm not like dirt broke, you know, but there's this idea that to travel the world, it's, you have to be this like very wealthy person. And I'm like, mm -hmm. have you ever really researched what right. it takes to live in India and what a plane ticket costs? Like, not that much, actually. It's like way less expensive than, mm -hmm. than living in the States. It's way more expensive. But there's, that, that's the idea they immediately go to, right? I couldn't do that because I have all these other things that I have They're to limited do. beliefs. Exactly. And so we like our limited beliefs. We want to hold they on to our limited beliefs. They make us feel comfortable. They make us feel comfortable. So that's why we would be so attracted to, well, there's that powerful person that is taking a lot of shat, but also is telling me what to do and making decisions so that's more comfortable and I don't have to like face my deepest pain. And I was thinking about the, the Roman Republic, the Greek democracy and how for a long time it functioned great like they had the smaller groups everyone was represented voices were heard they took the consensus mm -hmm. it was truly a hive mind operating for the betterment of society and like you know look it, it just their culture spread so much and then especially with the roman republic there was that thing about caesar you know and how people were so seduced by mm -hmm the allure or the power of like this powerful man that just comes in and says no i'm taking over and this is what we're gonna do and we're gonna take over the world and you know have all these resources and people just got seduced on that thing mm -hmm. and that we really haven't kind of gotten away from that you know i read a channeling uh, many years ago of, uh, i believe it was a sylvia brown channeling actually but she was saying um at some point um that we uh, the United States will abolish the presidency mm -hmm. and that the, what was originally written as a legislative, executive, and judicial branches, that context of why those checks and balances were there is kind of moot now. Mm -hmm. They're not really checking each other because of the way that right. the leadership has strong-armed everything. It's really just one small group of people that's saying who's on the court or, or anything. And that it's all abolished. And we go back to original Greek Senate structure and all the districts of all the everything. There's no more gerrymandering. There's no more weird. It's like all like a beautiful, transparent, transparent equal, you know, population wise. Everyone gets their voice. Their representatives are truly representing the feelings of the of the people mm -hmm. and not, you know, whatever else. And that we don't need a pre we don't need this leader to be distracted by and to be constantly talking about and be constantly looking and scrutinizing. Right. And it's so much smoke and mirrors that is in the way. And it's like the leaders become the Senate. You know, it's like they're all leaders, but they're representing how everyone else is leading their own lives to get to that point. Well, I think that the key to what you just said was that they're representing the the desires and wants of each individual inside of that. Well, that's the key is that each of those individuals needs to be aware yeah. of what their true wants and desires right. are as seeing the collective 
yeah. and desiring to have unity and desiring to have that peace and harmony. So if each individual is still resisting and pushing against something because they have this fear of the leaders controlling them, then they're not actually listening to what their true desires are. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I don't believe that it's about a, a new form of, of um, government coming in and pushing the other one out of the way. It's around each individual and each local group feeling empowered on their own to know what it is they truly want. Right. And that can be the voice and the voices that rise. What do you think? What do you think uh, is the way for us to discover what it is that we really want? What would you say is the pathway to that? Awareness? I think that that's what the superhuman training program has yes. been about, and that's what the first few episodes were really about: was how do we listen to our own bodies, listen to our own emotional systems that are saying very clearly, and they they get squashed by our our mental programming that says, ah, well. That isn't. That can't be true, um, because of our valuing. So the way that we value and the way that we view our own desires and our own, um, really our own creation of life itself, the way that we value that has to shift. And so the shift comes from our own perspective of us, and then our own perspective of each other. And when that little flip happens that little switch and the majority of people have taken responsibility for their own listening then we can start to listen to each other and we can start to actually hold the world accountable for the desires of all but it really I think that the the key is just as we've talked about a lot that our values of safety Yes. for one has to shift because so resistance yeah then the, the payoff of the resistance strategy and reappropriating our value on the resistance because we're going to resist being a leader just like we're at, at first going to resist being awakened mm -hmm. right and the, like, as we've been talking about as you said in some detail the path to awakening begins with assessing what our core pain is and how we're resisting it mm -hmm. and how much we value that pain or over identify with it thinking that's who we are on the deepest level and that's why we need to be to protect it to defend it and protect it which is what our resistance job is so much that we then are overvaluing that to where there's hardly any conscious value left for even imagining if I could create my own reality and be the leader of my own the captain of my own ship that happens to be an armada that's <laughs> all these other beautiful ships and captains that you know they're they're working together perfectly in, in harmony like a symphony of notes and it comes back to them that you know spirit always says to me there is no work in flow mm -hmm. there is no work in feeling pain the work is with the resistance mm. engaging resistance learning to properly engage it in a way that accelerates and expands our conscious awareness and to notice so much you know and again that safety or the I'm a victim or I want to be told what to do or it's safer this way that's all resistance is all words mm -hmm. and strategies of resistance and to bring appreciation and gratitude for that you know that's the one thing that disarms resistance the number one thing that disarms resistance is appreciate the, the vibration of appreciation and or gratitude thank you for doing your job thank you so much you've done a great job let me give you a new job mm -hmm. right? you know hold me so I can feel this thing that I think is true but I know is not true so let me really know and feel how it's not true and the pain dissolves then when we enter that flow state it's like I am this apex point of all the resources of all creation flowing through me and then I in that and I know every time I have that visceral experience it is revealed you know to me this is what's yours to do mm -hmm. you know like it's been handed to you right you know here's the story to tell here's the message to to share here's the ideas for all the thing here's the excitement and the desire and the conviction and the enthusiasm here it is mm -hmm. and those are some of the words that emotional experiences that point me to knowing when I'm really aligned with that and then it's not about saving anyone or taking over or I'm surmassing this you know big thing it's just like what is mine to do is going to fit perfectly in with like what's yours to do and then when everyone has their we're all we're doing the same thing but we have our own little integral part and the thing is about the value and that's that difference to me in the heterarchy versus the hierarchy is that with the hierarchy and you can even look about the way you 
something like 80% of them want to be, when they were asked what they desire in their life, they want to be rich and famous. Mm. That's not actually possible for everyone to be famous, quote unquote. Well, and, and what is that desire and where is it coming from? When we look at our culture right now in media, we have been entrained at a young age that the the highest potential of of our creative life would be stardom and actually that is not the role of most people and that's actually really hard place to be mm -hmm. it's meeting the people that I have in my life when I was 19 meeting Brad Pitt and him escaping literally I asked if he was on vacation and he said no more like an escape that they were escaping the pressure and the constant desires of people to to take from them and ask from them and and praise them whatever it was they weren't being seen as human anymore right. they weren't being uh, room for their authentic there, there, and exactly and there thoughts. wasn't room for them to be an authentic person and that is a really hard place to be and um Elijah uh, said after he told me that he said that um, that G Jim Carrey had said in one of his interviews I wish that everyone could get famous so that they could see that they don't want that I, don't want that. <laughs> that, I yeah. wish everyone could get to that place so they'd realize that that there's Wasn't nothing what I that's not yeah. what they actually want and so when we look at a, a leader isn't in this reality that we're talking about it's not about having followers it's around empowering others and sparking others and so we in the in a sense of some of the clubs I've been a part of and some of the um, production teams I've been a part of that have worked more in this holographic synarchy synarch way where we're utilizing each person's divine gifts and then we're taking turns putting on that hat of being in the role of quote unquote the leader Delegator, for that right. time right wherein there is a specific objective that we're working to reach and that person that day has a tool that they are uniquely qualified to guide the ship that day or that hour towards that objective knowing that in the next turn, mm -hmm. the next goal might be another person wearing right. that hat right. of the guide. Yes. And so that we're, we're no I longer feeling the pressure yeah. of being the one in charge. Right. Because being in charge is actually really, really hard. Because there's so much pressure we put on ourselves to stay perfect mm -hmm. and to stay like the, the example you gave of the pastor at the church. Yeah. That he judged himself as not being worthy of carrying God's words and wisdom right. because he wasn't godly enough. Right. And so that pressure and anxiety actually stunts our own creative flow. And since most of what we've and talked so about like, in Then this, our actual leaders can't be leaders. Exactly. Because they're so... It's toxic. Cramped. It's toxic, yes. Right, and so it's something oh, that, hallelujah. We're, that we're we're <laughs> biting off this story at a young age and then thinking that that's what we really want and we we want more of that but that thing that we're actually trying to ingest is not whole foods it's not holistic for us and it's not going to build a ecosystem in our own bodies of emotional mental spiritual health it's going to come into us as this insidious thing that just destroys us from the inside because it's it's like eating this top, uh, I don't want to use the example of, of, of a specific thing but it's like eating fast food all the time you're not actually getting the nutrients that you truly need and what I mean by that is that when we have examples of true leadership where somebody might be holding a compass at this time saying yeah this is if we have a goal as a team and we're going that way I think I know the way and we all rally behind that because we trust that they're in alignment at that time with that truth because we're listening to our own truth we're listening to our own alignment because we've been feeding ourselves positive 
reflections and seeing ourselves as whole so we know yeah actually I do trust that he or she has that viewpoint of what is possible now when they get to that goal as a group and then that person says wow okay great done I don't need to wear that hat anymore Mm. that's actually so liberating when they don't have to be put into this box any longer of everyone is relying on me right. to be the neck to know exactly where we're going next and that's something that I was reading in um, that you actually read in my astrology and then um, our, our other friend read in my astrology um, in regards to this teammate that I'm working with right now that in a, in our past he was on a pedestal he was a, a guru of sorts that everyone was placing up on this pedestal and I had the ability to just be his friend, be his partner in it, and see him as human. And so he was able to just relax and be himself around me and barely any other people in that life. And that is not the case in this life. I absolutely do not see that he will be placed on the pedestal for much longer, that the, that the purpose of his spiritual gifts are to spark others to remember that they are a conduit for their own their their own guru inside and so the more that we can value our own gifts the more that we can see each person as perfectly human and the superpowers that they have don't make them better or bigger or know anything more than we do and so that that I think is where we're coming right now yeah the hallmark of true leadership is humility, and we got to think about how we value that word. Humility, kind of like the word meek that I brought up in a previous episode. The words uh, the, that point to our greatest power, mm. we have made into synonymous with weakness, something that we don't right. want, right? right. So it, it's entrenched, almost like a conspiracy, right? It's entrenched that our true leaders would not be in the capacity to be led and that the people that are looking for a leader are not in the capacity they're not valuing what true leadership is right so we want to perpetuate this suffering but to, to me you just described humility perfectly mm-hmm. you know that the the guru or the leader that can come and then bow to you because they're bowing to that which lives in them that which is awakened in them lives in you and they're mm-hmm. bowing to the you know in kundalini yoga we ong, ong namo gurude namo is the is the opening chant and it's basically calling forth the guru within to emanate from your spine and it's got uh, chill bumps and that's what humility is humility is power humility is there, I'm so connected to the truth of this that the there is to me there's only one power that exists and it's the power of love and love you know it's not like a trite thing to say like love literally is union you know the the illusion of separation or the illusion of polar polarized thinking mm-hmm. co- coalescing uh, folding in on on itself and that is, is this emotional experience is even beyond an emotion of love and. When you are viscerally connected to that, there could be, there's nothing to defend, there's nothing to protect, there's nothing to uh, be praised for, Mm -hmm. right? There's nothing that needs validated. You're all of it. So all there is to do is just share like this fountain and to, you know, like that's what we want to bow and be like, we're so connected, right? And that's humility. Yes. There, um, this passage in the Gene Keys, which we've mentioned before by Richard Rudd is um, an incredible, uh, book of, of knowledge that our community is um, just absolutely blessed to have and I welcome anyone to ask us questions about this and please go onto Amazon and order your own copy I think it's only like $20 right now which is so incredible um, but inside of the gift of leadership leads to humility and in humility it says to be truly humble has no agenda It is not necessarily interested in freeing people from their illusions, even though it may unwittingly do so. Such a being realizes that it is not possible to influence anyone in this world. To recognize that you just are what you are, you radiate and vibrate what you are without an agenda. So recognizing that the previous agenda would have been power, money, it would have been 
coming from an idea of we aren't safe unless we have that, so I need to be in control of right. others to to have power for the generations of my family to come, right. that, that, that that would be the agenda. And then the agenda of someone on a spiritual path or a guru in an old context would be, I want to awaken everyone. I want to free everyone from their illusions. When in actuality, to be truly in your spiritual power isn't about re awakening anyone. And it's not around freeing anyone from an illusion. That just happens naturally when we recognize that no one can actually be influenced by anything other than themselves. Well, and that's the thing we're talking about if we're, if we're, uh, if the intention or the no, or maybe the no agenda way is to inspire independent thinking, then there wouldn't be an attachment to, I want to influence you to think like this. It would be more of like, here's what I've discovered in this way of thinking, if it resonates with you, awesome if it doesn't awesome mm -hmm. and think you know what do you think what do you feel what do you notice when this happens and I, I really appreciate that a lot um, uh, because I'm incorporating some of some of that really clearly into the coaching work um, that I'm doing you know and I that brings up a lot for me too like in the beginning days of like becoming a light worker know and doing all the energy healing training and the uh, doctor of metaphysical healing studies and all of that there was this sense of almost addiction to the light mm -hmm. being a light worker and being uh, away from the shadow or being so pious or being so perfect um, and that uh, taking this on of like I'm gonna save the world I'm gonna awaken the world and isn't that what we projected onto Jesus Christ to he saved us and that's perfectly the example uh, I think of what uh, Richard is saying here in the Gene Keys that you know in some other way it, that's a form of resistance mm -hmm. you know? it's a form of like running away from insecurity so that I can uh, I need to influence people so that I can amass security right or right. validation and that when you're truly in that place you're just sharing for sharing sake and everything, yeah, and everything just falls into place isn't right. it? yeah well, and that comes with trust of all. When we've talked about our valuing, where do we put the value of safety? And what do we actually trust? Are we trusting another? Are we trusting the government? Are we trusting in something outside of ourselves? Or are we trusting self and connection with spirit and trusting life itself? And that the game of consciousness is being played out through us, that we are one facet of that that beautiful game of consciousness unfolding and recognizing that there are patterns inside of our DNA and one of the ways that is described in this book that I really enjoy and something that we've talked about with the languaging of the word wound and the word wound that that it is wound around our DNA and that we don't actually experience the, the pain and the tension unless we're expanding. Yeah. When we expand, we're starting to feel where those boundaries are. And that wound feeling of feeling constricted is actually only happening when we expand. Yes. So when, when yeah. our own path for expansion is ours and we own that. Yes. That is, that, this is my path of expansion, and I truly don't care if you think that I'm being selfish right now, because my expansion is my expansion. And the, there's something that is spoken in, in here around humility that the truly humble person on their path of awakening and expansion doesn't care if other people think they're arrogant, that they don't need to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in their field that even can attach to another person's belief of them. And so when we can start to clear our, our addiction to other people's ideas of us, which we truly can never really know, even if we become a superstar on the internet and, and we read every single thing somebody's commented on our page and we're, ve we're weighing, <laughs> oh, 60% of people like it, but 40% of people think I'm an arrogant bitch. Like, who, who cares? Well, I mean, None of that actually with, uh, matters. Yeah, it, it doesn't actually matter. And again, I think this is a really beautiful thing that it brings up. 
the context of all of this, right? We can have, we cannot have an agenda or need to awaken people and what that's going to mean about us. And there's this nuance there, but we can remember that I feel like for you and I, especially that which is ours to do, that's been given to us, that which emanates and expressed through us is an agent of awakening. Not that it has to be, not that it changes anything it about us. Is. It naturally is. But then it's about, okay, we're, we are claiming leadership, right? I claimed it when I was 21 years old, when I left college, and I was like, I'm going to live my own life, and I don't, I, I don't know anything. I haven't got anything figured out. I have no idea. What a beautiful scared, place to be, right? And but I'm going to live my own life, right? And uh, and I feel that you did the you did the same thing from a very young age, and so we've been practicing that, and then this kind of next level of like engaging. The world. I, mean, I read something about um, something in my astrology uh, recently, and it said intentionally joining the rest of the human race. Mm-hmm. And that really resonated with me a lot. I was like, oh, damn. You know, I've been like, I've been so like, I just, I don't want to learn how to do online marketing. I don't want to learn how to, um, you know, fill up a, a, a big room for my events. I don't want to learn all these things because in the past, the way that I perceived it, it was like, well, everything is so calculated and meticulous and like all the things that are happening behind the scenes of like who, who, whose people's messages are getting heard or whose people's products are getting bought or whose people's services are getting bought right and then for me it was like oh i just trust spirit the magic of spirit is you know running into people it talks and you know things happen and also feeling the limitation of you know just like what we're doing here you know we're creating a podcast and putting it online we're putting it in these things yeah and for us Right? It really is kind of for us, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, no, it really, it really is. Not kind of. of. Yeah. It has to be for us. Just like when we make art, yes. it's for us. When we make music, it's for us. Yeah. It's the process. It's the journey. It's entering the flow state. And it really has no agenda beyond that. We're releasing this out there because we want to play with others. Right. We want to, we really like to play with others. And I really like what you said about entering the human race, being a part of it. Because we live in such an individualized society. We live in yeah. such an independent culture. Right. Wherein the rest of the world that previous to our very independent viewpoint, a family unit was a whole unit. They they work together. They live together. It was a whole unit. And here we don't have that. We have a very individualized life, which I think takes a lot of our power. You leave this away. house, y'all, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I think that you the, walk the out that playing, door, you're not coming back. The playing with each other <laughs> yes. is what. So when we release art into the world, with we share art into the world, it's an invitation for others to play with us, not a space of I created this and now. To get it, you must do this, this, and this, which puts me on a pedestal. Or to manipulate people or to be looking about, you know. And to me, there's this, this other, um, because I have been learning a lot about online marketing, and I can feel where I'm like, nope, not going to do that. I'm not re- I, don't, I don't resonate with that. But then other things are like, well, maybe I'm resisting because I'm projecting something onto it that really is just my own resistance, right? And then seeing, like, if there could be a very objective way of perhaps like looking at looking at your eyes I'm just doing this for me I would be doing it anyway if no one's listening that is my honest truth that like, is your it's truth it's mine to do it, it's it, your it, truth it's what brings me joy and fulfillment it feels good you know and it's sharing and then sharing across all these platforms and noticing who who is engaged who's who's showing up to play you right. know and then just kind of creating it well where to People like that, that like to play in this way, tend to congregate. All right, how about I focus that, instead of like focusing on all these other people that don't want to play, and right. then with making a, all this extra work about to how to like them convince somehow. them, or how right. to get them to play, right? It's just like, no. you know, and I love what RuPaul says, um, I ain't got time for people that hate me. I'm too busy loving on the people that love me. And that's, right? that's and, the key. And But also recognizing when we start to look at the whole as a whole, yes. and we're seeing that we're inside this one bubble together, that I'm going to love on the people that hate me regardless. So I, I drive an art car around town. I bought a car and I painted it up because I don't love give it. a <laughs> I don't. I absolutely think it's hilarious 
that the people that love it, they praise me, praise me, praise me. They see me driving down the road. They're like, oh, she did something different. Thank God she did something different. And then the people that want to laugh at me, they just, they're like pointing and laughing. I love on all of them regardless. Hey, it doesn't man. change my Thank belief of myself. Yeah. It doesn't change the fact that I enjoyed the F out of painting that car with my dad. Yeah. That was the, the joy and the goal of it. And it also, for me, was, re was helping me to release my own internal arrogance mm -hmm. and that I need to be seen as got it all together, perfect, right. like I'm driving my fancy $50,000 car and that makes me feel more comfortable in the world. It was actually beneficial for me to start driving this thing that was just a heap and making it fun. Yeah. Finding a way to have fun with it. And so um, I appreciate what Ru RuPaul says, but I don't actually agree with it because I do have time to love up on yeah, but everyone. Yeah, what, what, what he was meaning was that there's, and you know, in the context of like the dragon. He doesn't need thing, to change them. Well, it was saying, because that's what the focus was. It was like, oh, uh, defending oneself. Exactly. It's a non -humble no thing, point, right? no point. Yeah, it's like defending oneself and trying to change their minds, being so upset about it, and then exactly. neglecting yep. the people that are resonating and are here to play like, oh, you're not playing anymore because you're over there. Yep doing that yep. you know and so that's really what he what he was meaning and I, and I feel like also to um, you know what he wasn't saying but was saying was that when you are creating a synergy of resonance mm -hmm. by the people that love you that you love them then that automatic you're automatically extending that love that invitation to the quote unquote picture so right it's 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 we're open get yeah. in here and it's, your, it's your decision and I honor you if you're not it's right. kind of like where the focus goes Yes. Then that, that cell 
has to know that it is a part of everything, trust that it's a part of everything, and not resist it. Because if the cells in my body are resisting being right. Melissa Orion, I've got an internal problem going right. on. And if I'm not, as the leader of myself, attuned to that and taking enough time and energy to listen truly to this, then I've got a battle going on that I don't even know is happening. Right. And then I'm not going to achieve any of the goals that I want to achieve in this life because I can't emanate my truth if there's an internal battle happening. And so that's what I see as the, the macro to that micro of our government system in this culture right now. Yeah, we're actually, that, 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 wait, that's so our, next step, our next episode is about new government. It's, there's so yeah. much friction yeah. happening. And so with, with all these cells divided from each other, it's like this absolute internal war happening when what we really want is to just be seen and heard. And so the thing that I have thought of a lot since I was a um, teenager was that the, the process at which people awaken to form resistance, mm -hmm. that, they're, that they're dormant in it and, and say like the 1950s um, culture is like, sure, whatever you say, and we're just going right. to kind of march along and have our, our regular da-da-da lives. And then there was the 1960s and 70s that was the very resistant towards that. And so in that awakening of seeing that they were being manipulated and being sheep inside of something, then when they woke up to it, they're resisting something, but they're still living inside of it. And so I saw it as teenagers still living at home and being angry at their parents right. for what they're doing, but they're still living at home. Right. So when we create a new reality where we know we're being heard because like RuPaul was saying, I am going to give my attention and my love to the ones that love me. That creates a unity between them. Mm -hmm. And so that pod is like a dolphin pod that sees each other and is hearing each other. So I'm not a leader inside of if that. I can't listen. What's it? Yeah. I'm but, not, I don't need to lead any right. of the other dolphins right. because I know we have a, a common unity. Yes. And so we become that Common pod. Common unity. Exactly. Great, right? I love that. Exactly. I've never heard that before. Really? No. Oh, it's perfect. And so the oh other one, God. the other one is the the divine mirage, right? Yes. So mirage. it's so you've got yeah. marriage, mirage, or you've got a mirage. Right. So so what are you actually so seeing in reflection of others? If yeah. I'm a clear mirror myself, then what I see in you is me. Yeah. And what you see in me is you. And so when we start to have the friction for what um, I was feeling when you were talking about RuPaul um, not having any um, really time or energy to focus and change anyone else, I think that that's the, the wisdom of that person is saying, that's not actually me. So that's them having their own internal journey and their own they're yeah. not a clear mirror right. so i'm not going to look at that mirage over there right because that's not real right. i'm going to seek mirrors yes. to have a true mirage yeah. and so we can engage resonant growth together exactly and then mirror and reflect leadership in each other in each other yeah. recognizing that, that we're going to take turns we're going to take turns and that there's context it's like you know what's yours to do that's what you're brilliant at that's what your genius is so if we've got the context of the objective has to do with that then you're gonna play the leader hat you know but then we got other objectives that's someone else what someone else is theirs to do yep. and if there's room for all of us to be an, an independent leader but also an intra-dependent or interdependent mm -hmm. with each other and creating this new society and i, I uh, would love to close or wrap up on mm -hmm. what you said that to me is like the, one of the strongest superhuman qualities that would be and that I've really been um, in a master's class of this even more mm -hmm. recently mm -hmm. as I'm preparing to, um, to, 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 to express and share this coaching work more and that is the, the skill of deep listening. Yes. Right? It's not so much about, you know, even what we're saying, you know, I said to someone, I was like, it doesn't really matter because he was getting caught up on like semantics or I shouldn't have said that or I said that the wrong way or I'm not saying it right. And it's like, I hear what you're saying, but I'm listening to what your energy is The expressing. vibrational energy. Yeah, I'm listening with my heart. I'm hearing the words, but I'm listening with my heart. And so because the words can sometimes just trigger so many things and then like all of a sudden I've 
the rebuttal or like that or that one word triggers a certain we value words differently and stuff but if I'm truly listening and feeling then I know where the mirror is I know where we're connected not where's connected. the resonance where's the resonance or the incongruencies yeah. and that we have uh, that we're consciously cultivating a resonance field together engaging resonant growth when yep. it is applicable yep. and enjoying it together and playing right? our part playing our, yeah. and then in the world that we wish to co-create that we've talked about a lot if someone as an individual doesn't know what their gifts are yet then we become mirrors and reflections to help them find that and so when we've eaten the pill of I want to be rich and famous and they are coming with that desire 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 to be rich and famous having a collective of that energy field of mirrors to help them see what is actually true for them and then stoking them in that and so the thing I want to close with is um, the word coaching I feel like you're more of a cheerleader mm -hmm. and that you're more here to listen and then cheerlead the thing that is Indeed. their own truth and their own vibrational gift and so when we're able to really release the idea of needing to be a coach or a leader but more a stoker of the fire inside of each one and live in that common unity and see ourselves as whole with each other I love that yeah, yeah maybe I'll, maybe I'll that'd change. just be great maybe Let's I'll change my title yeah right. I'll be your cheerleader yeah I, and I truly believe that awakening um, accelerator cheerleader yeah that that that's the form of leader that I'm here to be right. that I'm here to cheer you on yes I absolutely don't desire you to follow me anywhere yeah. <laughs> I feel stalked when you do that. That's uncomfortable. Yeah. I feel trapped in your perceptions of right. me if I'm a leader, but a cheerleader. I will stoke you all the way because it's about you, 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 you. So yeah. anytime somebody sees me on stage or on camera or I say something special that they needed to hear, I bring it right back to yes. you yes. are it. And that's yeah. why you were able to hear it. And look at you, 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 you. Look yeah. at us, 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 us. Yeah. So I hope that this you, episode yeah. Yeah. has stoked in you a fire to listen more and hear what your true gifts are and find resonance with others that are mirrors of that. If a mirage shows up, and you can feel inside of yourself because you've used the tools that we've talked about before to listen and take that evaluation inside of yourself and you know it's a mirage, then just say thank you and walk away and find people that vibrate and resonate with your true marriage of your marriage. Mm. And hopefully we'll be on that path with you. Genie us. The genie us, the exactly. Genie us. Exactly. Oh, that was so beautiful. That episode went so, so fast. It did. It did quite. We're already believe. four minutes over. I can't believe it went so, so fast. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, uh, we uh, humbly invite you to leave us a review on iTunes if yes, um, any, anything that we have uh, said is inspiring and to uh, share with your friends and also to um, share with us if you're having conversations like these. And if you're not, to have an invitation to, you know, have conversations like these with, uh, with people that you care about. Yeah, and we so, are available. Yes. So please send us your feedback. But also, if you feel a, a divine mirage with us, let us know because we are you. And we want, we want to know how many more of us there are. I love you so much. I love you so yeah, much. I'm just like back in here in the radiance. Well, I am grateful. you and you are me and we are all together. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's it for this time.